Hi, everyone. I'm Coach Sierra, the Research and Assessment Specialist for Academic Coaching for World Changers. Thanks for clicking on this video. Today, we're going to talk about the measures of central tendency. So what are the measures of central tendency? Well, a measure of central tendency or the measures of central tendency are a summary measure that attempts to describe a whole data set with a single value that represents the middle or the center of its distribution. So when we think of a distribution, you can think of the normal distribution, also known as the normal bell curve. We also know that the measures of central tendency don't just show up in a normal distribution or a normal bell curve, but they also can show up in a skewed distribution, such as a positive skewed distribution or a negatively skewed distribution. This will come up at another time in another video, but if you aren't familiar with those terms, I would familiarize yourself with those terms because they could potentially be on your exam. There are three main measures of central tendency that you could see on the exam, the mode, the median, and the mean. Now, we're going to talk more in detail about those today. Each of these measures describe a different indication of the typical or central value in a distribution of scores or data set. So in real life, that's always important for people to understand, like, how do we use this in real life? Um, statisticians or researchers will use the measures of central tendency to get a quick snapshot of what is happening in a data set. This is when we're just trying to quickly summarize what's happening before we're going into the standard deviation, the range, the inclusive range, and all of the smaller details and important details of a data set or a distribution set. So the measures of central tendency are the mean, median, and mode. But it's also important to note which things are not the measure of central tendency, such as range and inclusive range. That could show up on your exam. Which, in, which one of these answer choices are not a measure of central tendency? And that would be range and inclusive range. Okay, so let's start off with the mode. The mode is the most commonly occurring value or number in a distribution. The mode is a number that appears the most. You can also think of the mode as the majority. So for example, if I have a clinic and there are 10 people in my clinic and seven of them are experiencing chronic depression, then the modal group or the majority of the people at my clinic are experiencing chronic depression. Here, let's look at this data set. So consider this data set showing the retirement age of 11 people in whole years. So that means like there's no decibels. 54, 54, 54, 55, 56, 57, 57, 58, 58, 60, 60. The most frequently occurring number here in this data set is 54. So that means the mode or the modal group of this data set is 54. And this could be an example test question you could see with a set of numbers and asking you to identify the mode or you might be asked to define the mode. So it's important to know the application of the term as well as the definition. You also might see the term bimodal. Bimodal comes from mode. If there are two numbers that appear most often and the same number of times, then the data set has two modes or bimodal. So if we go back to this example here, if there were 354s and 357s, for example, when we're talking about the years of the people um, showing retirement, then there would be two modes by modal because two of the numbers occur the same amount of times more than the rest of the numbers by modal. If there are more than two modes, then it would be called multimodal. So if there were four numbers that showed up um, more than the rest of the numbers, it would be called multimodal. And if all the numbers appear the same amount of times, this would be considered no modes because there's no number that stands out more than the other numbers. Let's move on to the median. The median is the middle number of a data set. I like to think of the median as the median is the number that stands, or the median itself is the thing that stands between me and another lane of traffic or me in the ditch. Like when you're driving in real life, that's what the median is. So the median is the middle number. The median is the middle value, reading the terms off the screen, in a distribution when the values are arranged in ascending or descending order. So highest to lowest or lowest to highest. So to figure out the median, you would put all the numbers in order from highest to lowest or lowest to highest. You'd pick then the middle number. So what do you do if the numbers are odd? Well, you'd simply pick the number that lines up in the middle. 
For example, if I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I could cross a number off both sides. and see that four is the number in the middle. But what do we do if we have an even set of numbers? Well, in that case, we'd pick the number that falls in between the two numbers. So for example, if I was doing the same type of question and I was crossing off numbers and I'm like, uh-oh, I'm stuck between two numbers. Well, what I would do is I would add those numbers or divide and divide by two, so it'd be 3.5. Or what I could do is just know that the number that falls in the middle here would be then the 0.5 or 3.5. And these here, these instructions are here on the screen well as well. If there's an even number, you would then pick the two middle numbers, add them together and divide by two, which would make it 0.5. Then you find your media. Going into more detail about the median, the median divides the distribution in half. So if you see a test question that says, which measure of central tendency represents 50% of the distribution, then that would be the median. Looking at the same retirement age distribution as we did before in our other example with the mode, which has 11 observations, the median value would be 57. As you can see here, that's the number that falls in the middle. All right, the mean. When people say average, they're usually talking about the mean. I would like you to think of when you call someone mean. You don't typically call someone mean because of one behavior. It's their average behavior. That's what makes them a mean person. So the mean is the sum of the value of each observation in a data set divided by the number of observations. This can also be seen as the um, arithmetic average. So that means it's a calculated average. Remember that this exam is not an exam that you need a calculator for. So you shouldn't have to calculate anything. Know that the mean is the average. And if they ask you to find the average, it'll be something very, very, very simple. Nothing that you would need with a calculator. This, this exam or any exam that you're taking for your credentialing or licensing would not require a calculator. So here we are looking at the retirement distribution again. We have our set of numbers. We'll arrange them in order. We'll divide it by the number of observations that we have, which is 11, and we'll see that it equals 56.6. This is a bit more advanced example because I wanted to show you the point of calculating the average, what we mean by the average. But remember, for your example, you would not need to calculate it, although you would be able to find the average if they asked you pretty simply. As we're talking about the measures of central tendency, note it's important to be able to find them and apply them as well as define them. So in your notes, which I hope you are taking notes in this from this video, to make sure you have uh, the definitions as well as an example application as well. Okay, so here's a question from Helwig. I'm giving you the answer and I want you all to think and hopefully pause this video to figure out why it wasn't the other answer choices. If you book an individual session with me, I do this quite often. Sometimes I give you the answer choice and I want you to knock out, why wasn't it A? Why wasn't it B? Why wasn't it D? That way we're not just learning the right answers, but we're learning the other definitions and applications of other terms that could show up on the exam. So the question reads, a newspaper opinion writer hopes to sway readers of her article about the high cost of homes in a community. Although she has several measures of central tendency of house values, she chooses the blank of house values. And the correct answer is mean, but why? So I'm gonna be quiet for a moment and let you all pause the video to figure out why, use your notes. This comes from the Hellwig book. For those continuing the video, let's find out. The answer is mean because the mean is generally considered the best measure of central tendency and the most frequently used one. The mean also gives us an idea where the center value is. So if we're trying to figure out the center value, such as where the cost of homes in a community, we like to use the average. The average is convincing because it's an, it's an arithmetic average. It's been calculated. Rather than the mode just tells us the most frequently occurring number, not the average cost of a home, which is what you'd use to sway someone. Like the average cost of milk is $8. That would convince me that milk is definitely getting expensive. 
The median is the number that simply falls in the middle. And we typically don't lean on the median as much because it, it really is just the number that falls in the middle. And then the range would definitely not be the answer because the range is not a measure of central tendency. Moving on to the range, which is not a measure of central tendency, the range is the difference between, oops, sorry about that. I'm trying to move my camera over, let's go back. The range is the difference between the highest and the lowest values in a set of numbers. To find it, you subtract the highest number from the lowest number in the distribution and then solve it. And again, I use the word subtract, but I mean that very loosely. Remember, you don't have to use a calculator. So here's an example of a number or number range. The highest is nine, the lowest is three, nine minus three is six. You can count that on your fingers. This is an example of what you might see in the exam, but it's important to note that the range is not a measure of central tendency. The range and the next slide, which we already got a sneak peek to inclusive range um, is the one that's on the next slide, are measures of variability. The measures of central tendency are mean, median, and mode. The measures of variability are range, inclusive range, standard deviation, and variance. This video is only going into detail about range and inclusive range when it comes to the measures of variability. So inclusive range, to find it, you subtract the highest from the lowest, then add one. We do this because we wanna make sure that we are inclusive. What this means is whenever we are giving an example of a survey, like I want to survey 20 to 40 year olds. Well, are the 20 and the 40 year olds going to be included? Well, if you say inclusive range, you'd add one to your statistics or to your number count to make sure we're included. This is a statistical uh, tip to make sure we are including everyone in a survey. So here's an example. We have 10 individuals, their ages are 24 to 47. I would subtract that 47 minus 24, add one, because this is the inclusive range. If the test question asks you why, to make sure everyone is included, including those on the end, and then you'd have your answer for inclusive range. All right, so let's summarize. We have our mean, median, mode, range, and inclusive range that has been covered in today's video. But the measures of central tendency, which they might ask you about, are the mean, median, and mode. I think many of you are familiar with the mean, median, and mode, but you may not know that the mean, median, and mode are measures of central tendency. So that's why I wanted to take the time to record a video on it, just so you didn't miss a simple point of, well, I know the mean, median, and mode, but what's the measures of central tendency? So if they ask you to define it, or if they ask you which one is a measure of central tendency or which one is not, this video would equip you to answer that question correctly. And that's the end of our video. So I'm going to take a moment to type out my email. Those of you interested or have any follow-up questions. This is my email. And then if you're interested about our company, Academic Coaching for World Changers, you, of course, can check out our website or email drpam2020 at gmail.com and watch our other videos. There's more information for you. We're happy to share. We're happy for you all to be a part of our world. And we really appreciate you taking the time to watch. Study hard. Keep up the good luck. Keep up the good work and good luck. And have a great day. Thanks for coming.